If you have a 401k, you need to make sure you're not making the same mistake that 92% of Americans with a 401k are making because this simple mistake could be costing you millions of dollars. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to avoid making this mistake. The majority of Americans are underfunded for retirement right now. And out of the people who are actually saving for retirement, the vast majority of them only have a 401k as their retirement vehicle. And then out of the people who have a 401k, 92% of them have no idea of what their 401k fees are. Yes, your 401k is costing you money. There is a fee to using a 401k, whether you know it or whether you don't. And if you don't know it, well, then there's a chance that your fee could be costing you upwards of a million, if not more dollars over the course of your entire career. When you put your money into a 401k, you're putting your money into a fund. And this fund can either be a passively managed fund or it can be an actively managed fund. But in any case, there is going to be someone or something that is managing your money inside of this fund. And there is a fee that you have to pay for your money to be managed by somebody else. And these money managers charge you a fee, which is called an expense ratio. And if you don't know what your expense ratio is, you might want to take a look. The average 401k holder in America is paying somewhere between 0.5% to 2% in fees. And if that doesn't sound like a lot of money, well, that's exactly what your money manager wants you to think. A small 1% fee isn't just a 1% fee today. It's 1% on all your assets, including your profits every single year. And so you're not just compounding your wealth, you're also compounding your fees. If you invested $1,000 a month and you could get an 8% return on your money over the course of your investment career, well, over the course of your lifetime, you could turn this $1,000 a month investment to $5 million when you retire. But what about fees? If you had to pay a small 1% fee, well, now your wealth is going to drop from $5 million not to four and a half million dollars, not to four million dollars, but to 3.66 million dollars. And do you wanna know where the extra 1.3 some million dollars is going? This million dollars is going directly to your money manager's pocket. This is why most people don't know what their fees are because most money managers don't want you to know what the fees are. And second, most people have no idea what these fees are costing them. This is just a 1% fee. If you're paying a 1.5 or 1.8% fee, well, that's going to eat up even more of your future wealth. This is why it's so important for you to take a look at what that expense ratio is. Now, I get it. When you sign up for your 401k, you're going to get a packet this thick. But look for that number, the expense ratio, and see what it is that you're investing in. Because there's three factors that will determine how wealthy you become. And this isn't just your 401k, this applies to all of your investments. But the three factors you have to pay attention to are how much money you're investing, the return that you can get, and finally, how much time you can invest your money for. We can't control the time aspect because the best time to start is today. If you're 45 years old, 55 years old, well, you can't go back in time. However, you can still start today. But the factors that we can change is how much money you're investing and the returns that we get. And one of the simplest ways to boost up these returns are just lowering some of those fees. Now, the whole idea behind this fee, especially the higher fee, the pitch is if you pay a higher fee, you'll be able to get a higher return. You're paying for somebody's expertise. But what we've seen time and time again is that for the average person, unless you're investing millions and millions of dollars, for the average person, you are going to get a better return by investing your money into a low fee fund because those fees are going to eat away at your profits and the money managers that you're getting cannot outperform the market. There's two ways that you can invest more dollars. You can spend less money so you have more cash to invest or you could earn more money. There's a limit to how much smaller you can live, but there's no limit to how much more money that you can earn. If you want to earn more money, now you have to decide how involved do you want to be and how risky do you want to be. Do you want to get an increase in your career? If you can't find something in your job, maybe you look for a new job, maybe you look for certification, maybe you look for some other way to earn more money. If that is something you want to do, do that. 
If you want to go out and start your own thing, well, then you can look to create your own income. You start your own business, you start your own side hustle, you become a freelancer, you become a virtual assistant. There's a lot of ways for you to create your own income. It's much more accessible now, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It is very difficult to be an entrepreneur, but there's no limit to how much money you can make as an entrepreneur. You can 10x, 100x, even 1,000x your income. You can turn your annual income into your monthly income if you become an entrepreneur. However, it's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. Your weekends, your evenings, your holidays are gonna be working days for you. And if you're willing to put in the work and take that risk, then entrepreneurship is something you can consider. The way you increase your return is gonna depend on how you invest your money. And this is gonna be difficult to do within your 401k because within your 401k, you're limited to what type of things you can invest in. So this is where you also want to be investing outside of your 401k because the reality is your 401k was never intended never intended to be your sole retirement plan. And this is where you have to also invest your money outside of your 401k. If your company offers you a 401k and they're giving you a match, take it, take the free money, put that money in the 401k, fine. But then you also want to be investing outside of your 401k because outside of your 401k, you have the potential to get a much better return on your money. And once you start doing that, this is where now you can decide, do you want to keep investing money in your 401k or do you wanna invest your money outside of a 401k and get those potentially better returns? This is gonna depend on now how actively you want to invest. I like investing for cash flow because cash flow funds my guac flow. When I invest my money into assets, what I'm looking for is how much money do I invest today and how much cash flow is this investment going to pay me? Because this cash flow that comes in monthly, quarterly, or annually, this cash flow can fund my life without me having to go to work. So the bulk of my investments are for cash flow purposes. I invest some money in five places. My business, real estate, stocks, crypto, and physical gold. And crypto is mainly Bitcoin. It's in this order from biggest to smallest. Business is my own businesses that I run. I talked about Briefs Media on multiple times on this channel. Briefs Media is my business. It's a cash flow producing business. Real estate. When I invest in real estate, these are my cash flow producing assets. I buy real estate for one reason, for cash flow, because now these properties pay me every single month. When I invest in stocks, I'm again, I'm looking for cash flow with the bulk of my stock market investments. Most of my stock market investments pay me dividends. Not all of them. I have a piece of my stock market portfolio that's more on the innovation, growth, risk side, but the bulk of my stock market portfolio is dividend paying stocks or ETFs because these pay me with cash flow. My Bitcoin, no cash flow. My gold, no cash flow. But these are also smaller pieces of my portfolio. My crypto, mainly Bitcoin, is much more speculative. So it's a small piece of my portfolio. And my physical gold is more of a hedge. It's a protection. It's like insurance. It's an alternative to saving money. It's a way that I save hard cash. So I'm not really looking for a return on my gold. My Bitcoin and crypto are more fun and speculative. If it goes to zero, no big deal. My stocks and my real estate pay me with cash flow even if I don't work. And my businesses pay me with cash flow, but I have to work to grow my businesses. The biggest benefit that your 401k has is a potential employer match. So if you're investing your money into a 401k, capitalize on the employer match and then outside of the employer match, that's where now you can look at how do you invest your money yourself, that way you have more control over your money, that way you could potentially pay less money in fees, and then that way you can invest your money yourself. You can invest your money for cash flow, you can invest your money for appreciation. There are many different ways to invest your money, but you can't always do that inside of your 401k. But when you invest your money outside of your 401k, now all of these options open up. And this is where now you can make that decision. Do you want the cash flow or do you want the future growth with your money? I personally don't like the idea of a traditional retirement. I don't don't plan on stopping working when I'm 65. I want to work until I die. So what I want is cash flow that I can use today, that I can use next month, and that I can use next year. Now I have the choice what I do with this cash flow. I can use this cash flow to buy more assets that pay me more cash flow, or I could use this cash flow to live my life. I have that choice but I don't want to build this investment or retirement fund that I have to access when I'm 65 and then when I have all this cash, now I stop working that way I can use this cash. That's not the way that I look at my retirement planning. I look at it completely differently because I like what I do. I'm an entrepreneur and I monetize the things that I like doing. And because of that, I do my finances very differently. Now, you gotta decide what's right for you. Do you want to stop working at 65 and just do whatever, travel or whatever it is that you wanna do? Or do you want to build cash flow now that you can start using now or sometime in the future? 
The reason why so many people get discouraged with this idea of cash flow investing is because when they run the numbers, they think, oh, I'm going to get a 4% return on my money. I'm going to have to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars before I get any sort of significant cash flow, so I never start. Well, you don't have to start with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. You can start with $100, and $5 of cash flow is a lot more than $0 of cash flow, and then you can keep doing it week after week after week. You keep putting in $100, another $100, maybe $110, maybe $120, and you keep working. Anytime you earn more money, you keep investing it into these assets, whether it's cash flow producing or not. You keep investing it and you stay consistent. That's the key to becoming wealthy. The key to becoming wealthy is not taking a bulk of cash that you work to save up for years and then you throw this money into an investment. The key to building wealth is constantly for the long-term investing of money. And then on the personal side, figuring out what type of lifestyle that you want to live and working towards that lifestyle right now. If you don't want to just quit work and do nothing, then figure out what is it that you can do what are your skills and is there a way for you to monetize your skills that when you have something, a passion that you can work for and also get paid while doing it. You can make money when the market's going up, you can make money when the market's going down, but if you're getting greedy, well, you're the one that's making both of these people, the bulls and the bears, rich. The stock market almost acts like a double-edged sword because the reasons why the stock market is so great is the same reason why the stock market causes so many people to lose money. The reason why the stock market can be a great wealth-building tool for